If you've bought any sneakers recently, they may not be the real deal. Like Nike. Nike 3 and Nike 5. Uh, exactly the same. Footwear accounts for about 20% of the value of all counterfeit goods in a global market worth over $500 billion and rising. These are not real. It's fine. Appreciate it. The quantity and quality of counterfeits has never been greater. To me, these things are damn near one to one. With many buyers purposefully choosing the steel. I think it's pretty close to a victimless crime. Over the real. Let's be clear, organized crime is involved. So why has the counterfeit market exploded? And should the big brands be worried? favorite pair. Oh, that's so difficult. Um, that's like asking a mother to choose her favorite child, right? Tallulah is a self-styled sneakerhead, like millions around the world. This pair of Jordan 4s I have, and they're called Classic Greens. They're from like 2006. And it was like the first shoe that I was like, I need this in my life. And she's lucky enough to combine her passion with her day job. We had the Dior Jordan 1, which was like nearly 6,000 pounds. That's a shoe that a lot of sneakerheads will like never even get to like hold in their hand or see, so that was a pretty crazy moment for me. But Tallulah is not making or selling sneakers. Her job is to sniff out the fakes. The smell test is a part of the authentication process that we do. If I just smell this one. If there's a strong toxic smell, that would not be a good sign for us. She works in this secret warehouse, specially set up by eBay to stop the endless flow of counterfeit products onto its platform. Everything from handbags and watches to playing cards and shoes. So counterfeit shoes is like a daily occurrence that we see. If a shoe has just released, you know that immediately the people that make fakes are going to be straight on it. The legal global athletic sneaker market is already worth more than $100 billion and is expected to keep growing. And when products of any kind are in such high demand, this often fuels a boom in counterfeits. Generally, an increase in illicit trade overall leads to an increase in illicit trade, just because more trade is more opportunity for illicit trade and usually is growing the market. Footwear has become the most seized counterfeited product in the world, accounting for nearly a quarter of all confiscated goods. Want to know if I wear my Kicks 49 is truly selling dead stocks? eBay checks. See eBay's authentication warehouse is part of a fight back by big brands against the growing epidemic of black market goods. Our aim is to prevent any unauthentic items from entering the retailing network. We've so far authenticated over one and a half million pairs of sneakers through our facility. It's a 120% increase year over year. So what's behind this extraordinary boom in counterfeit goods? Perhaps the biggest driver has been the e-commerce revolution. For the last decade, e-commerce has been growing fast in both the legal and black markets. Between 2017 and 2019, 56% of seizures of counterfeit goods within the European Union were linked to online sales. Then came the pandemic, when e-commerce transactions and sales increased even more rapidly, making fake goods of all kinds even more accessible. Consumers used to depend on bulk shipments making their way from wholesalers and middlemen to street markets. But today, buying fakes feels a lot like buying legal products. Sites like Reddit mean you can order bespoke parcels directly from counterfeiters with just a few clicks. Well, E-commerce completely revolutionized the business of counterfeiting. Shipments used to be made generally in large containers, 20 foot or 40 foot containers. We'd regularly see three, 4,000 pieces. Since those days, shipments are sent out individually by DHL, by FedEx, by China Post. Counterfeiters are utilizing e-commerce to further blur the line between the legal and illegal retail markets, 
When it comes to selling fake sneakers, some have abandoned the old tricks of the trade. Now, counterfeiters often seek customer satisfaction through transparency and honesty, purposefully using the digital sphere to advertise their counterfeiting prowess. Online counterfeiters are incredibly tech savvy. Online sales are their entire business. It's their bread and butter, and they need to stay ahead of the curve on technology. Now, how much would you be prepared to fork out for a pair of used shoes? There's another 21st century trend, common in legal retail, which is driving the boom in counterfeit sneakers, the resale market. In America alone, it is worth an estimated $2 billion a year. At the top end, investors are trading in rare, authentic sneakers, which are sold on for profits. Well, now you can walk a mile in Kanye West shoes. The first pair of Yeezys he ever wore are going up for auction. This pair, designed and worn by Kanye West, set a new auction record by selling for $1.8 million. People are investing in high-value sneakers. They want something that they can put on the shelf and maybe flip as the value goes up. It's a bit like fine wine or an art collection. This is a new version of items that people have a great deal of value in. Brands like Nike deliberately restrict supply on certain lines to build hype and demand. This demand for rare and authentic products has created a demand for high-quality fakes. Consumers are prepared to pay good money for good fakes. So recently we've been seeing a lot of counterfeits that they're getting a lot of the good details of the shoe. With the value of sneakers at an all-time high, the counterfeit producers are making uh, sneakers kind of one-to-one -one quality. The likes of eBay and StockX put authentication tags on sneakers. But now, the counterfeiters are even copying those tags, some more credibly than others. Take a look. Look at the color. Look at the color. This one's a little bit more lime green. This is just like a mint green. Online influencers like this are found across the web. And just as influencers have become an important way for retailers to push legitimate products, so they have also become a significant force in driving consumers towards counterfeits. To me, these things are damn near one-to-one. -one. I mean, in my opinion, ones they have nailed. Some of these influencers have millions of followers and their videos have had millions of hits. They feed hungry consumers details about the varying quality and costs of counterfeits on offer. They do look like a really nice shoe, even the fake ones. I can go online and buy a pair like this close to the real thing. I might get them now, you know? This is a little advertising for the real deal. And we have some horribly fake ones like these. Some argue these connoisseurs of counterfeit are performing a much needed service for consumers. Replicas, or reps as they are known, are often simply more affordable for buyers. Somebody shouldn't pay $1,000 for a shoe that's supposed to be from Nike and get it from somewhere else. I don't think that that's right. But if you're buying reps to wear them because you can't afford or you don't want to spend that kind of money, that doesn't bother me. When it comes to consumers buying a replica that they know to be a replica, I think it's pretty close to a victimless crime and the consumer is not harmed sort of by definition and arguably made better, better off because that person perhaps couldn't afford uh, or could only afford at great lengths to buy the original. But promotion by influencers can only go so far. To avoid being delisted from platforms like YouTube, influencers are careful not to say where counterfeits can be bought. I didn't say where I got these from, but it is from a really reputable person and name in the rep space. With the prolific rise of influencers and e-commerce, demand for fake sneakers is unlikely to subside anytime soon. So what about shutting down supply? That's also tricky. About 80% of the market value of all fake footwear seized worldwide comes from the world's largest manufacturing country, China. Biggest manufacturer for replicas in China, as a side note, is actually Putian, China. The city of Putian has become the global capital of sneaker counterfeit production. That's partly because Putian also produces the majority of the world's genuine sneakers, providing cover for black market production. Did you finish all your orders before the Chinese New Year? Illegal production has become more closely intertwined with legal production, 
often within the same factory. Private detective Ted Cavaras has witnessed this firsthand when filming undercover footage in factories. It's kind of the urban land scale that you expect in China. You drive factory here, factory here, factory here, factory here. It's also doing like Air Jordan. How many machines do we have here? About 500. In China, counterfeits spawn copies of counterfeits. This is the original. So they took apart the sample, right? If there's a criminal group making counterfeits, quite often they'll have the number two or three in the hierarchy, uh, just learn the business and then set up their own shop. So one counterfeiting group can give birth to three or four competitors. Although counterfeiters can seem more like regular business people, worried about customer service and overheads, they are not always committing victimless crimes. Some counterfeit operators are also involved in more dangerous and serious criminal activities, such as human trafficking. Let's be clear, organized crime is involved. I've very rarely had a, an investigation that hasn't involved some other type of crime. We investigated a group who had been exploiting Ethiopian women who had been trafficked. The Ethiopian women were being locked in rooms, forced into making counterfeit product. At night, they were forced onto the streets into prostitution. The Chinese authorities have increased efforts to crack down on black market production and sales. And there are ways investigators can use technology to catch the counterfeiters occasionally. They want people to know that they're reputable sellers and that they have a, a thousand satisfied customers. And the platforms want this as well. So there are actually tracked records of sales on a lot of these platforms showing how many products the counterfeiter has sold. This is one tool we have that we can use against the counterfeiters. However, the sheer volume of production in China means there is little hope of closing down the supply line of fakes. It's a basic law of economics. If there's demand, there will be supply. At a certain point, you can't really solve that. All you can do is kind of occasionally nibble at the edges and knock off certain uh, suppliers and then another supplier comes comes along and it's sort of inevitable. It's not China's fault, it's the demand from overseas driving this business in China. So what we have to do is look at who's buying it. We have to control the customer too, and do we do that by education or by policing? There is no easy answer to curbing consumer demand. For brands wanting to slow down the counterfeit market, there could be a rough ride ahead. In the end, it's like inflation. You know, if you and I start literally counterfeiting dollars or pounds, who are we really harming? But in the aggregate, it starts to inflate away the value of the dollar if we all did that. And so it's the same kind of dynamic with brands. It starts to inflate away the value of the brand, dilute the value of the brand. Hello, I'm Tom Standage, Deputy Editor at The Economist. If you'd like to learn more about this topic, click on the link opposite. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.